this is uh, Wild Bill um, making a video. Do you believe in the RNG? So this is the second video in a three-part series. So if you haven't watched the first video, I'd recommend that you do that. The first one I called, um, Are You Being Monitored? Uh, which I go into some detail about some of the technology that casinos have available. Um, and this is a continuation of that. The RNG, I know a lot of you believe, is uh, all that determines your outcome on a slot machine. And hopefully by the end of the video, you'll have a different opinion. And I'm going to do this video uh, just like I did the first one. I'm going to put some... Uh, slot machine play in the background and then I'm going to post or insert some images that I've taken from research that I've done and then I'll talk about the you know the implications of what I've been able to find. Uh, so the first video I'm going to put up though is my website um, twamblers.com um, all of the topics that I'm going to talk about and do you believe in the RNG or already on my website, so if you prefer to just read, you can go up there, find that page, um, and find all the different things that I'm going to put in the video. <clears throat> um, so to start with, I'm going to put up the overview of the main document, or the first main document that I'm going to use, which is uh, from the Nevada Gaming Commission, the um, so it's the point of view of this document is if you're a manufacturer and you want to um, you want to submit um, or get your slot machine approved, this is the device submission package, and you can see it's from 2010. And I'm just going to leave it up for a few seconds because um, I want to put up the, the next one, which is from the same document, um, 2010, Nevada Gaming Commission. And basically, the point of view of this whole document is that you're a manufacturer, and it kind of sets up all the different steps, what you need to do to submit to the commission to get your slot machine approved. So they want to see all the technical details of how your slot machine works. Okay, so the next um, image I'm going to put up is kind of the, it's a technical standard, 1.140, conditions for changing the active software. Okay, so what this talks about is the commission is basically saying, show us how you're going to change the software. Okay which is totally different than <clears throat> the old way. And I think the way most of you think about slot machines is you think there's an RNG and the RNG does everything. Every outcome is random. So whether or not you hit a winner is just depending on when you push the button. And as you'll see, um, I think that was true. There was a part of a slot machine called the EEPROM and let's say it was the year 2000, 20 years ago, that EEPROM would have been real and it would have been, you know, a physical thing with pins that actually sat on the board inside of the slot machine. And most importantly, that EEPROM was all inclusive, meaning it had everything on the slot machine that was needed. There was the game code, random number generator, a pay table, and then uh, it was tested, and so they knew that there was a certain payback percentage, and so when you actually got a slot machine and you got an EEPROM, the manufacturer would be able to say, yep, that's a 92% payback machine, we've tested it, and so then you would know that that's what the payback was, and everything was read only. In other words, EEPROM is, stands for Erasable Programmable Read Only Memory. And the key here is read only memory. Now, it is erasable and programmable, 
But to do that, you actually have to take it out of the slot machine, take it back to the manufacturer, and tell them, hey, I want you to change the payback, put in a different pay table, change the payback percentage or whatever, or just give me a different one with a different payback percentage. So if you were going to change that, you had to change the EEPROM, okay? Because everything associated with that game was all on that one device. But remember, that would have been true in the year 2000. Now, the next image I'm going to pop up is the um, Technical Standard 2010 says, describe how you're going to change the payback percentage, whether it's a program change or whatever. And this is a, a huge leap, folks. Okay, so the technology, remember, this is from 2010. So what this is saying is um, Nevada Gaming Commission is going to allow real-time changes to the payback percentage. So what this means is that EEPROM, where everything was read-only and stable and you got 92%, what they're basically saying now is we're going to allow you to change the payback percentage. And the casinos specifically asked for this because it was really expensive to change payback percentages. Now think about it, if you had a casino and you've got 2,500 machines and you need to change payback percentages, you would have to open up a machine, you'd have to take out the EEPROM, you'd have to replace it with a different EEPROM, with a different payback percentage, and that would take multiple people because of all the auditing Right, and it would take it was so it's just really expensive, and so the gaming commission ap approved this. Okay, so I know a lot of you are thinking, well, this is about the RNG. So the next um, image I'm going to pop up is from the same document uh, under fourteen o four zero. It says describe the RNG, basically. Submit us your source code. We want to see what it is. And make sure that you're not seeding the, the RNG with a single or static seed, that somehow you're using one non-predictable factor. So based on this, I would say that the RNG is actually still quite real. It's still being used, but as you'll see in the next image that I'm going to put up is because they can change the active uh, software, the next image I'm going to put up, and I'm just going to put this one up briefly because what it is, it's another patent that came out in 2013, and you can see the number 20130310164. Okay, so what this is, is a patent for gaming devices. Um, and under the description, I'm going to put up a, another uh, image, and this is from the patent. Basically, what it's saying is um, a method in a gaming device to offer a player a jackpot-only pay table. Okay? Think about that. I mean, gone from the year, let's say, 2000, this is patent was applied for in 2013. Now what they're doing is they're saying, hey, if we can change the pay table, we can actually offer the player a jackpot only pay table. And the way they do this, now these images are from that patent, um, is they've put in a pay table database into their server. And what this is, is it's a place to store all the different pay tables that they're going to have as part of their server system. Okay, so it's a tabular representation. Um, in this case, they give you some sample records and so on. But the point is, is inside of their server now, inside of those slot machines, or not in the slot machine itself, but on the server, they've actually created a pay table database where they put all the pay tables. And how they get to them is on the next image I'm putting up, which is again from the same patent, 
they've created what's called the rules database. Now in my previous video I talked about a little bit about my career and in, in my experience all I've ever done is worked on database servers. 30 years now that's what I've done. So a rules database I've used. Okay so what they're doing is they're putting together a set of rules for you or for the for the uh, software to use that says hey here's a bunch of different rules where boy Wild Bill's had uh, 20 losing spins in a row let's feed them a jackpot only pay table so it doesn't matter what the random number generator does he's gonna hit a jackpot because they can manipulate the pay table and they're doing it through this rules database right so the whole bunch of different rules I'm just gonna talk about a couple of them you know like your loss amount or the amount of comp you have let's say you're using your card um, how hard you hit the button like how frustrated are you um, is one threshold that you can you can hit how many times you go over the number of times you need to right so if I play just a two credit machine and I'm going bet, 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 and I do it like five times because I'm frustrated, and then I do spin. They're actually keeping track of that, folks. They're keeping track in your history of how frustrated you are, and that actually can be to your benefit. You can actually hit a threshold where it says, oh my God, Wild Bill is so upset because he's losing all this money and he's banging on the machine, doing bet, 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 and it's only a two credit bet, but he's hitting me five, six times because he's so pissed. And I can actually go over a threshold and they'll pay me. Okay, that's what this is saying. Um, so a rules database with the ability to change the pay table. Okay, so I'm going to actually try to explain this. I've got two pay tables that I've made um, using Excel spreadsheets. This first one is uh, based on triple stars, and it's a bad pay table example, okay? So I've got a row, zero through 13, and then real one, two, three. So the way the RNG works is the RNG is gonna spin up three numbers. I'm using, I only play the single pay line, three real games like double diamonds and triple stars and triple diamonds, triple double stars. Um, so there's only one pay line, three reels, right? So what happens is a random number generator runs three times. It comes up with three different numbers, okay? Well, those numbers aren't gonna match my row IDs, right? Zero through 13. But what happens is there's a mathematical uh, function called modulus, or short, or mod, M-O-D for short. What modulus does is it returns the remainder of two numbers. So you're going to divide the number of rows, 14. Let's say the random number generator comes up with a number 140. And if I give mod my mathematical function 14 and 140, what happens is it's going to return 0 because 14 divides into 140 evenly with no remainders, right? That would give me zero. Or maybe a simpler example would be like a pay table with five. Okay, let's say my, my random number generator comes up with a number 100. Well, five divides into 100, and so I'm gonna get row zero. But what if it's 101? Well, then there's a remainder of one. And so it would come up with row one and so on. Now the key to this pay tables though is that you have to feed the mod function the number of rows so it gives you the remainder zero meaning it's um, divisible evenly and then the remainder is what is going to map to your pay table. I hope that makes sense. Um, but I'm going to put up another example and keep talking about this so that you guys understand. Um, I've made a good pay table, um, a jackpot only pay table, 
Now I'm using triple stars and $25 and just a simple five row pay table. But you can see that I've loaded the pay table. All I've put in it is flag sevens and triple stars. So it doesn't matter what the random number generator does. The minimum I'm going to get is flag sevens, right? I'm going to get, now I could come back, if I came back with a one and then a zero and then a one again, I'm going to get flag, 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 which is 80 credits and at $25, that's a $2,000 winner, right? That's a jackpot. Now I could get triple star, I could actually get triple star, triple star, triple star, and I could be betting one or two credits. So I've made my example, so it doesn't matter if I'm betting one credit or two credit, but this is the kind of thing that they're going to be able to do. I mean, think about some of these things that I've put up. They've created a pay table database, right? They've created rules on thresholds that can change the pay tables. They've included logic specifically that talks about jackpot only. Okay, so here's what the casinos are doing. They've got installed now, they still have random number generator, but it's become meaningless, right? Because you can change the pay tables. And by changing the pay tables, you're basically making a random number generator a useless part it, it's there and it, I'm sure it's part of their system but essentially by being able to change pay table they've made the random number generator almost a meaningless part of the system okay um, so that's it that's what I wanted to talk about today I um, like I said it's all on my website and I will put my my website address back up so if you um, had trouble reading them or I didn't leave them on long enough, etc. Um, you can go up to my website and you can read all about this. All these images are up there, including links to the complete documents and so on. So this is Wild Bill. Thanks for watching. And more importantly, thanks for listening. And uh, please like and subscribe.